All right, let's look at uh, question one through six. Uh, this is the first topic of uh, the school year. Uh, it was about function notation. I hope that by now you have a little bit better, at least a little, little bit better understanding of notations uh, and functions. Now, uh, we have two functions here. We have f and g. Uh, f is a square, uh, a quadratic function. g is a square root function. Now, uh, if you look at number one, uh, the major thing about number one is that students who don't know how to answer this question correctly, uh, they are likely the ones who don't understand what it means to look at this parentheses f minus g parentheses two. Now, it may give people a misconception that it's about multiplication and the fact that it's not. The meaning of this is simply f of two minus g of two. That's what it means. And I have very strong confidence that you know how to do f of two and g of two. So now, um, uh, so you know how to do f of two and g of two. I want to show you the proper way of annota uh, annotating your work. Now, when you do your substitution, I would strongly recommend you to use parentheses. And what's even better is that you put a pair of parentheses around the f of x or f of two, and then put a pair of parentheses around g of two. Now, is it okay to write down four plus 12 instead of two squared plus 12? Now, if you, if you ask me in a very strict sense, I would strongly discourage you to write four plus 12. Well, I would just go ahead and say, I disallowed you to write four plus 12. The reason, the argument is that no one knows where the four came from. But if you write down parentheses two, then everyone knows where the two came from. It's from the substitution here on the left. So then you show your work and say, all right, four plus 12 plus square root of two minus one, which is one. And if you have your good notation, your life is usually very good because uh, you are guiding yourself to the end goal with proper notations and uh, thoughts are very clear, you're very organized and you try to prevent, you are preventing yourself from making stupid mistakes. So that's number one. Number two, yes. Oh, subtraction, sorry. Well, I still make stupid mistake. Thank you for catching it. Okay, so 15. Okay, so that's 15. Number one answer is 15. Now number two, FG1. Now, if you uh, understand what number one, the notation for number one, you probably have a good idea for what number two means. Number two simply means f of one times g of one, okay? So we will show our f of one, which is one squared plus 12 times one square, square root of one minus one. If you see something, you will see that uh, the right-hand side, I mean, the right-hand side, sorry. The square root of one minus one is gonna be square root of zero, which is zero. So, uh, so the whole thing becomes zero. That's very nice. Okay. Now, if you know how to do number one, number two, like if you know how to do f of two, g of two, f of one, and g of one, then it's gonna make your number three and number four very easy, but a lot of people, they, well, the beginning of semester, it was not something students were familiar with. Now, the reason why students were not familiar with these uh, notations, because uh, you have F and G, you have a bunch of parentheses, so things are a little bit chaotic, okay? Things are a little bit chaotic. Okay, so, uh, so if you know how to, how to do F of one, F of two, 
then there's actually no reason why you don't know how to do f of g of x. Now, let me show you the proper notation so that you will be like, oh, that's what it means. I should have known. I should have known it, or you, sh you should have told me earlier. Now, f of g of x, if you know f of one, f of two, that means you would know how to replace the x with two or one because that's inside the parentheses. So now, what this means is that f of g of x, what is g of x? Well, at the very top, it says g of x is equal to square root of x minus one. That is your new x value. So let me highlight this so that you can see the similarity. So they can practice the same logic. So f of x and f of two, well, two is your new x value. So that's why you substitute two into all the x's. And now it's just that it's not a nice number two. It's not that simple, straightforward, but it's still a thing. So you just go ahead and substitute that thing into the x. So x squared plus 12. Well, what is the new x? Square root of x minus one. So now you just do the computation. Square root, square, they cancel each other out. So x minus one plus 12, it's equal to x plus 11. It's okay to uh, not have a solid number a simple number at the end, yet it's okay because uh, we have x to substitute. So at the very end, it should make sense that we might have an x in the expression. So again, you just have a somewhat different thing to substitute into x. So don't make it overly complicated. So the same goes to the number four, g of f of x g of f of x is well g of what well f of x is equal to x squared plus 12 so we replace f of x with x squared plus 12 because that's what f of x is and let me use a different color this time use orange so uh, this thing right here is the same thing as g of one the one and uh, so you know what g of x is if you know g of x then you know g of one because you replaced a x with the one and now we just have g of something else called x squared plus 12. and what do we do we will have square root of x minus one but what's this new x x squared plus 12. So x squared plus 11, and that's as far as we can go, okay? Now, you might be tempted, you might be tempted that, hey, can I just uh, do the square root and square right here? And the answer is no, you cannot. But why not? Okay, why can't you do it? Why can't you do it? Okay. Now, uh, my simple explanation is that there's a little positive. There's a little plus right here in the middle. Okay. If if you if it's not if it's not an addition, that's fine. Okay. Uh, just because you see the square root and square doesn't mean that they would always go together. Uh, if they understand the reason of why they could or could not. Now, but that explanation may not be sufficient to uh, to argue to help people understand why they, it cannot be done. So my, my suggestion is this. I'm gonna do a side problem right here just to show you how it cannot be done. So let's just say that this is my, uh, this is my, um, this is my proof. Okay. This is my proof. 
Now, if you if you do this uh, regularly, what's five square? Five square is uh, twenty five. Twenty five plus eleven, it's going to be thirty six. So if you do it in the most regular way, you would get square root of thirty six, which is equal to square root of. Well, that's right. Square root of thirty six, which is six. And you know this has to be the right answer. Okay, so we know that this has to be the right answer. And so now you are saying, wait, hold on. Can I do the uh, square root and the square right here just by itself like this? Like, would it be possible and make it equal to x plus square root of 11? That's usually what people are thinking. Well, let's test out the idea. Because we know that this has to be true. Okay, so now we say, hmm, let's see. So if I have this, can I make it like this? Okay, can I, quote unquote, distribute the square root? Well, that becomes five. That becomes square root of 11. And what is square root of 11? Around three point something-ish. And that's how you know the bottom part right here is very, very, wrong because it doesn't give you the same answer now, if it works out to be the same answer then you have some argument to say that oh they are equivalent it could work so if you work if you use some numbers and it doesn't work then it certainly would not work with the variables now that's how i actually learned much better math when i was in high school Actually, because um, I, uh, I realized that uh, I don't have a tutor or I don't have a teacher to uh, answer my question while I'm taking a test or exam. So, uh, so that's why I would have to think of some simple ways to verify my thoughts. And using simple numbers would be a very good way. All right, number five. Number five, it asks for the domain. Oh, wait, hold on. Uh, let me finish number four first. So number four, the answer is simply x squared plus 11, since we cannot go any further with this uh, expression. Okay, so that's where we will stop. For number five, domain of f of x. Uh, well, it's a quadratic. Uh, if you know how to do a quadratic, which you, sh which you should always know, how to graph a quadratic, simple quadratic, it goes like this. Okay, this is the quadratic equation x squared plus 12. Well, that means, what's the domain? All real numbers, yes. So uh, we just say uh, parentheses, negative infinity to positive infinity, okay? And you will see a lot of interval notations for, uh, for domains and ranges. Uh, the domain for g of x, well, it's a square root function, so it will not be all real numbers because uh, we don't want anything underneath the square root to be uh, negative, okay? So how can we prevent the bottom part of the square, I mean, uh, the, the highlighted part right here? How can we prevent x minus 1 to be negative? Well, then we say uh, x must be at least 1. And it can go as high as anything, infinity, okay? So that's how we figure out the domain for uh, G, okay?